Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhua Theater, where Improvaganza will be showing this weekend just in case you were wondering about that. I am really excited to introduce you to my guest today. He is one of the most awesome guys in the music scene here in Hawaii for several different reasons. And we're going to explore those right now. We're going to talk with Seti Blaze Pascua. Did I, I say your name right? That's correct. Yes. Oh, good. Seti Blaze. Well, thank you. Seti, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. It's an honor to be here. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. You are... Um, you're, you're one of the nicest guys around, period. Uh, you're an awesome uh, guitar player and vocalist in, in the band Wolfpack. And you are also a go-to guy for a lot of people in the music scene because you are the guitar and amp doctor. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you. I love to. So we're going to talk about all of that. Okay. Okay. Um, First of all, let's talk about, if, if you don't mind, let's talk about what you have coming up for Wolfpack. Where are you playing next? Uh, we'll be playing at Anna O'Brien's on October the 8th. Rocktoberfest. Yeah, that's going to be for uh, Rocktoberfest. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hold those every month and a half. And um, we're going to be featuring Sire, the uh, Lords of Rock. We're going to be featuring uh, Black Rose uh, and our good friends at Bread of Roof. And of course, my band, Wolfpack. Wolfpack, mm -hmm. which is um, he heavy rock. Can we call it heavy um, rock? Heavy rock. That would be that would be perfect. Is yes. that good? Yeah, that's okay. good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so a little bit earlier, we were talking about the difference between rock and metal, and mm -hmm. I really don't. I can feel the difference. <laughs> Can I say that? You know, one makes you want to go more like this, and one makes you go like that. Yeah, That's correct. what. <laughs> good definition. Is there is there a definition that you know of that? Um, well, Between the two? Uh, yeah, I think uh, hard rock is more, uh, more melodic, more, more based on, uh, more set in the 80s or, or that style of rock, mm -hmm. which uh, melodic, regular, 4-4 uh, four -four tempo, and then now it's changed into lower tunings, uh, uh, louder guitars. Um, just uh, more orchestrated into themes, into theatrical type of uh, oh. compositions and things. Do you think it's more lyric heavy, necessarily? Um, I think I think maybe it's a a little uh, more shouting. Yes, <laughs> lyrically oh. correct. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, metal. Heavy, hard, hard, heavy metal. Uh, yes. uh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I'm just wondering, I don't, you know. Good shouting, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's, good. it's good shouting, though. Uh, Wolfpack, so Wolfpack has that coming up. How long have you guys been together? Uh, this band has been together for about two years. Um, this is the latest incarnation of it. And we have uh, Tommy Kadani playing drums and Jason Pack playing bass. And I'm very happy with this lineup. This lineup seems to be uh, the one that, that I was kind of had my ideals toward what I wanted this band to be. Oh, what's this band to be? Have you always been the common denominator in the band? Is it your band? Um, it is my band. Okay. Yes. Is it okay yes. to ask that? Sure. Is that, yes, all right. Yes. It's your band. That's uh, cool. You're the pack leader. It, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just had to howl a little okay. bit on the show today. <laughs> it's uh, the equinox, and we've had a lovely full moon, so we can howl. That's right. There you go. Um, and you have always, uh, your music is original? Uh, we play only original music, correct. Yeah. That's very cool, that you have not succumbed to the tyranny of covers. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but I am. <laughs> yeah, we just, um, I just have this vision, and um, I only have one life to live, and I want to paint what I want to paint in my life instead of doing something that's already done. I'd, I'd rather go out playing something. Uh, well, let's say, if I flop, I'd rather flop on my own music than playing 
music that's already been done or someone else's music. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Now, I, I, and I do have to say, I went to see um, the Symphony, the Queen show last weekend. Oh, awesome. You know, speaking of covers, there's a lot to be said for someone playing a, a, a song that you know and love really, really well, and they were awesome. That was oh. a good show. And there's also something to be said for taking someone else's cover and making it your own. So, Correct. you know, I, that I'm not poo pooing all of that. Yeah. But I think it is very often that you are offering your 100% uh, your own expression. Correct. Yes. So, are you coming to the band um, are bringing lyrics and an idea of the music? Are you bringing the package to the band? Or are you collaborating entirely with the band to create? Um, this one's unusual. Uh, a lot of the songs that I've had that, that we have now were written a while back ago. Uh, but we, we're in the process of changing them to each individual uh, band member style, you know, here and there. But, oh. um, but yeah, I pretty much have a vision of, of what I want the lyrics to be, how, how I want the music to be. And pretty much I, I bring it to the band and we sort of put our ideas together and see what we can come up with. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so you're kind of tooling your own covers. <laughs> Correct, yes. That's, that's, good that's nice, right? <laughs> Correct. Um, so are you, does it, do you feel like you hear the music in your head first, or is it the words that drive it for you? Um, it's, it's the music first. The music's always first. Um, I'm just musically driven. Uh, whatever I'm doing, wherever I'm going, I'm always thinking of music, uh, melodies, beats. Um, you know, my father was a, was a guitar player, and so he, mm -hmm. he taught me when I was a child, and then I, I went to school and uh, learned from there. But music has always been my passion. Everything that I do is music-based, yeah. Whether I'm walking or oh. hopping on the street or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a hopping. Yeah, the there you go, yeah. <laughs> I try to create a beat here and there. So you f are feeling music, sort of a rhythm of life, would you say? Music is life to me, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so do you listen to music? Are you someone who is listening, you know, you're the good guy with the headphones or the music playing at all times? Or do you find yourself spending time in silence and just listening to what's... Um. I spend more time in silence listening. That's a good question. I, I don't get asked that. Um, uh, it, it comes from my heart. I hear the music um, and then gathering from what I learned uh, in school and uh, about music, I, I'm able, I'm, I'm so blessed that I'm able to bring that out and construct music in a way that uh, is with life and happiness and love and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Now, with that kind of attitude, I might expect, you know, like show tunes to come mm. out of you. So it's interesting that mm. that expression comes out in hard rock. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's talk about your background a little bit. Your dad was a guitar player. My dad was a guitar player, and we, I was raised in the military. We were, we were in the army. So oh, so were you moving around? Yeah, we were constantly moving around. Lived in Europe, uh, a lot in the mainland. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Germany. Uh, Spain, places oh. like that. So you were around a lot of music, musical influences, oh. varied. A lot. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. Do you have your first guitar still? Um, no, I don't. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That one came from Mon uh, Montgomery Ward, I think. Oh. One of those catalog <laughs> guitars, but yeah, yeah. No, oh. That's long gone. Oh. I wish I still had it, though. Yeah, I'm sorry that I brought it up then. No, no, I no, just no, kind of no. assumed you'd have it. That's great. It's good, it's good to think about that. You know, where's that guitar? <laughs> uh, so you have the, had the opportunity to, I mean, music is different in Germany, I would imagine, at the same, when you were there in the 70s or 80s? Uh, I don't know. Yes, yeah, but, early 70s. Early yeah, 70s, yeah, it was yeah, late, late 60s, early 70s. Very classically, uh, uh, very classical, very disciplined, very, uh, I find that the culture there and the children there are very mature for their age. Oh. Yeah, being uh, very family oriented, very musically inclined. Um, you know, that place goes way back to classical music. And yeah. A lot of waltzes are made in Germany, you know, come from Germany, a lot of, a lot of uh, composers, yeah. So more metered 
music, yes. you felt like. Yes, that yes. makes sense. Yes. Martin Luther was my first experience oh, really? with German music. <laughs> okay. That's a good <laughs> the one. The hymnal, you know. <laughs> Um, okay, so then you went to school. Did you study music? Yes, I did. Yes, went to uh, graduated, uh, took classes in UCLA, and graduated in Pasadena um, College, and uh, and of course my father taught me, and I I was blessed to take guitar lessons from Joe Pass when when I was a child. So that my father kind of knew him. Ah. Like it, so yeah, I had a very musical upbringing. My parents were very supportive, and I'm very blessed for that. And you make your living entirely based on music now, is that and, correct? It, correct, yeah. Fixing musical and repairing them. Um, anything musical, teaching lessons. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. that is really awesome to be able to say that. Yeah. That you, your passion is also your career. Uh, it, it is, yes, yes. <laughs> I wish there was more to it, yeah. but, um, but I love, that's my passion and I love doing it. That's where my heart lies. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy that that's where your career lies also. Yeah. How long have you, uh, how long have you been back in Hawaii? You, you traveled around, you were at UCLA, what brought you here? Um, I got a notification from my mother. She's uh, well, well in her years now and she wanted me to come home to be with the family. And so I came back in 2000 oh. yeah, and I was up there. I, I left after high school, which I graduated in 79 and left shortly after that and then stayed up there and did everything that I need to do and then came home, yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, did you start your first band here? Um, no, I had, I, I, I had a, a lot, um, some pretty good successful bands in California, yeah, opening up for some pretty good acts. Okay. And I also uh, did guitar teching for some major, um, major acts. You don't want to drop names? Um, Sepultura. Uh, Steve Stevens, um, oh. Terry Bozio, awesome. uh, yeah, <laughs> people like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, so you—that's really cool that you came back for your mom because you yes. you had you had some big stuff going on there. Yes, yes, but I my my mother is is more important. Yeah. And I didn't want to miss miss the the rest of my life with her. Yeah. So. How quickly after you came back did you form a band here then? Um, I didn't form a band until I think it was 2008, I think, or somewhere around there, 2007. Oh. You waited a little while. Yeah, I waited a while. Yeah. And was that Wolfpack in its original iteration then? No, I actually formed uh, uh, Lucky 13, which was a very uh, popular band here. Yeah, we, we were so blessed to win the first um, Hard Rock Cafe Battle of the Bands ever oh. yeah, after four gigs. So I was very gifted with the musicians wow. that were in that band. And, uh, but everybody moved on to, to things that they needed to do in their life. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. not, no, no names that we would know um, here. Uh, Rick Rocket is uh, doing, currently doing his music at home. Uh, Gerard oh. Gonzalez yeah. is of course, in Storm, yes, as we almost did. Uh -huh. And my good friend Eddie Black is in Sire. Oh. And um, Scott Moniz uh, had uh, a band called Slack Alice, and Cal he was in Calamity Jane back then. So we all have our so good, yeah. some of them are around. Yeah, we're, we're all around. OK. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take our first break. Oh. Already, yeah. We're going to be right back talking more with Seti, so please stay put. Hi, I'm Crystal. Welcome to Think Tech. My show, Quack Talk, normally airs at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays, but it's going to change to 11 o'clock. So don't miss it. It's an hour later. You can sleep in a little longer. Come with me and engage in some sensitive, provocative discussions on everything. It's all good, all right? Women's issues, things that people don't dare talk about. We want it on the table. So join me. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gardo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have you, good, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? 
Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Hi, we're back. We're live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. I want to let you know that you can, if you would like to interact with us, you may do so. You can tweet us at ThinkTechHI. Um, also, if you or someone you know really should be here at the table talking with me, you can let me know. You can tweet me at It's All About Donna. I would really love to hear from you. We are back talking with Seti Blaze Pascua, uh, the guitar and amp doctor and um, leader of the Wolfpack. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so let's talk about the um, guitar and amp doctor part of your life. Did you did you have another job on the island and then one day decided, uh, no, I just want to have my life all be music? Um, or what? Um, I, I I started working at the music stores naturally when I first came back. Okay. I started working at Hot Lakes and then I went to Dan's Guitars, a very good friend of mine, Dan Takamuni. Worked there for about eight years and then went, uh, had moved on from there to Easy Music Center for a couple of years and then oh. decided that I wanted to, to do this on my own. Yeah, so. Was that a difficult step um, it, it, was a, it was in the beginning, yeah. but then when I realized that I, I could do this on my own and um, on my own time, is, that's when I made that decision to yeah. do that. Uh, okay, so guitars, I understand that if you are a, a guitarist, you get to know your, you know, your electric guitar. Amps is another thing. Amps involves electronics. Where did you learn that? Where I learned that in, in, in college. Oh. Yeah, learned that in college. You learned everything that I know in college. You studied electronics in uh, college? Electronics, yeah. Oh, yeah. did you know that's why, what you wanted to do with it? Uh, that, well, that being a part of it, yeah, musical instruments, uh, anything electronic. I do keyboards, uh, rack equipment, studio equipment. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I try, yeah. I try <laughs> yeah. Okay. I do have to say, I'm going to mention Dan's has mm. a wonderful stock of ukuleles. Oh, yes. Yeah, he they, does. They really do. And yes. they let me play even oh. the really expensive ones. Oh, they're ones. awesome. <laughs> That's such a great store. It is. Yeah. It's a nice store. I mean, yeah, they make you feel at home. Yeah, I think it's one of the boutique stores here on the island yeah. that carry uh, things that pros would, would you know, look for. Yeah. I was, I was staring at a very expensive um, resin ukulele. I think, up on the wall, and a fellow came over okay. and asked if I wanted to play it, and I okay. said, yeah, you're going to oh. let me, t it's like a $1,000. Oh, please. Yeah. Oh. So I just wanted to throw that in. Yeah. Um, okay, so here, as someone, here's what I'm wondering. As someone who has formed a couple of bands, and, and you guys gig pretty often. Correct, yes, we do. Yeah. Um, what kind of... Um, what goes into forming a band? Hmm. A lot of discipline first. Uh, a lot of dedication, love and passion, uh, a lot of patience, yeah. and um, musical knowledge. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and of course, we all have to be on the same page. Yeah. To to contribute, you know, so, to because I want the love of my band members to be there, you know. So it's not so much of a job. Not so much, so they enjoy making the music as yeah. well with me. Do you did you go out to other gigs and watch guys and say, "You, I want you in my band"? That's what I did with Pac Man, Jason Pac. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, when we were um, in the middle of a change, I I told Tommy, my drummer, I said, "I want him." <laughs> <laughs> That's him. Did you Let's steal him, him from another band? Uh, no, he was he had just uh, actually. Uh, left, left his band. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah, okay. That's when we grabbed him. And the others? Were you already buds, or how did that happen? Uh, Tabi Kadani. I've no. I've actually known him since, since the uh, late seventies, eighties. But I haven't uh, 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 met up with him for a long time until I found him on Facebook. Oh. And then uh, found out that he wasn't doing anything, so I grabbed him. Oh. Okay. Yeah. How often do you guys rehearse? We try to rehearse uh, at least twice a week. Right. Yeah, before a show. We don't go into a loud live uh, rehearsal until about the last 
three rehearsals before. And you were, before we came on, you were saying something about, I said, I don't really like to prepare for my shows because I, I mean, it's not, it's not that I don't prepare for the shows. I don't, well, I don't, I do a little, I do a little, um, Stalking, okay. <laughs> we can say well, it. Well. You know, I do. I look around a little bit. I watch. You have a lot of videos on YouTube. You know, I watch that, and I know you. But um, I don't. I don't want to come in with prepared questions or anything because I want an organic conversation. And I was really surprised to hear you say that. That's that's kind of what you like to do with a live performance. Not prepare too much. Uh, ex exactly. I think part of the the magic of a live performance is to uh, give them something that they already know, but in a different format. It should be live. Things should be spontaneous, I think. Um, you know, I, I think that brings out the magic okay. in, 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 in a performance instead of just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And, uh, but you have to work with each other enough so that you're trusting. Uh, so you can just let it out. We do have right? our cues. Yes, ah, well, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. You have to, as an mm -hmm. actor. We, yeah, we do this too. And um, generally, like when you're on stage as an actor, you don't want to switch things up too much from rehearsal. But when it does happen, it galvanizes everybody into an awesome, usually into an awesome performance. It's not wow. something you want to fabricate. Yeah, though. correct. So you are, you are purposely throwing a little something in there? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Do we, we have a few things that we're going to do with this next show. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that I think... Uh, um, that is part of the, the raw rock and roll element that I think people are used to seeing in pictures back in late 60s, 70s, where things were unbridled oh. and they were just kind of spontaneous on stage. That's what we like to do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, the unbridled mm. Yes, pack. yes. So uh, is there the dynamic of the people working together and I hesit I ha I'm broaching this very carefully because, oh, I know. Have you ever seen the show Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll, the Dennis Leary show? I've seen it a couple times. Okay, yes. it's, 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 it's awesome. It's funny. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's often very realistic. Uh, and there's a lot of tension between those people in the band. Mm -hmm. And it some, sometimes it really heats up the music side of things because they're, they have real passion involved in you know, the, what, what they're doing on stage. Yes. And we're not gonna get it, we don't have to like name any names or anything, but if there is, do you feel like that can help a band sometimes to have tension or a scene to have conflict? Um, uh, do you mean conflict in, in the sense of a, of, um, of a com com competitive way? In, Potentially, in yeah. Oh, yeah. Competitive, I, argumentative. Just differences? Definitely. Um, I, I, I think that's where your heart really comes out. On stage, we like to test each other. We like to try each other out. Um, Tommy will do something on the drums, and I'll try to one-up him on the guitar. Oh. Or we'll, yeah, we, we pull, pull that out. We try to pull that out in, in each other. I think it's a very healthy thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, as long as it's, and we know that we love each other. That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think you, you, uh, you are a very loving person, so I would oh, imagine your you. bandmates all feel very comfortable in that. Do you guys go out to see a lot of other bands? We do when we can, when we, when we you know, uh, Jason works nights, so it's kind of hard. Oh, it's but I, I try to when I can, when I'm not working, or it just seems my, my uh, uh, musical repair right now is, is was getting kind of busy, so I wasn't able to go out. And but I will soon, yeah. And yeah. I love supporting everybody. I love having your different bands on my bill um, when I hold the rock fest and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I just love this my circle of friends. Nice, they're awesome. It, it's very good scene of people here. Yeah, really. There's a lot of good people. A lot of very different personalities. It's it's pretty cool when they're all. Um, out and it is really I think it's really wonderful to see people out supporting other bands yes. and I also think it's really important to I, it, it, it is because the scene's only this the island's only this big <laughs> you know Correct. and um, uh, it's not really a, a lot of uh, a lot of the places where people play here at you know at Anna's and the O'Toole's mm -hmm. and and Hawaiian Brian's mm -hmm. those aren't tourist scenes 
Correct. You know, they're reliant on the people here on this island to Correct. come out and support. Yes, yes. It's nice to see. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, it is. Uh, it's, it's just always a joy to go out and and be amongst my friends. Um, it's it's a feeling like no other. Yeah. 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 To support so everybody musically. Were you, you're instrumental in putting together Rocktoberfest. Correct. Bam. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Suri. You are on it. <laughs> um, Thank you. Y you help gather the other bands and work with uh, Anna's to get it all together? Um, yes, I do. Yeah, oh, that's very with the, cool. With the promoter, the person who does the booking, Jamie. Yep. And um, I, I, knowing pretty much everybody, I'm able to, you know, ask them, give or take, or you know, if they want to be on my bill, you know, and I, I, I try to have different bands headline if I can to give them an opportunity, you know, to have a really cool poster to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with them, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just totally into having uh, everybody have a good time. Yeah. And um, I just love it. It's just great. Are you guys making any money doing that? Um, we are, but I think it, it the the rehearsal, what we pay for rehearsal, since we don't have our own private rehearsal, mm -hmm. it's not much. But you know, that's where you know for sure you're doing it for love and passion. Yeah. 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 It'd be nice to make money hand over fist you, as well. Correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And 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 who knows? Do you guys have a an EP or? EP no, but out? we're working on one. So, oh. Yeah. Good. And I know that not, you know, it used to be in the music business that that's what people made money off of selling this, the, their CDs, their albums, Correct. their tapes, their CDs. Correct. Um, and it's not really that way anymore. However, there is something to be made. Yes. It's so funny because when I started this band, I, I told my bandmates, I, um, I, this is more of a live band. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get our popularity by just playing live. And so far at where, where we are at, we're very blessed. Um, for our support, and we've come this far uh, without a product, oh, without yeah. t-shirts or anything. So, I would wear your t-shirt when we make when one, you, you'll when get you one. get those. You'll be for sure. <laughs> okay, good. Personally. And I, uh, yeah, I'm also a big fan of when you do decide we're going to put together an EP, we're going to get that music out there, oh. and you know, you get that out there for sale on. You know, iTunes or Google or wherever you want to, everywhere you can go with it. And people in Germany will be downloading your music. And yes. why not, why not? allow yeah. them that privilege yes, to yes. be able to hear you? Yes, yes. Tommy is, is more savvy on the computer than I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get him, I'll be able to get him to do that part for, for me. There you go. For us. I, 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 yeah, I, I hope that you do. Oh, but in the meantime, you. we'll go see you live at uh, Rocktoberfest. And let's talk about that one more time. It's October 8th at Anna O'Brien's. October 8th, Anna O'Brien's. And it starts at? The music starts at 9, and the doors open at 8. OK, that is going to be, there we go. Uh, that is going to be a lot of fun. I will definitely see you there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It would be an honor to have you there. Oh, well, thank That's you. <laughs> the nicest guy in the rock and roll scene in Hawaii, Sunny Blaze. Thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you so much I for really having appreciate me. it. I would also like to thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us on Center Stage. There's a few more people here I would like to thank. Our floor manager, Rich Prepus, who's right over there. Thank you, Rich. Zuri Bender, our studio overlord, who is in my ear. And I'd also like to thank Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. Thank you, and we'll see you next week at Center Stage, Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Bye.